Eric Kupperström is Managing Director for Impact Investing and Natural Climate Solutions uh, at Manulife Investment Management. I saw your speech this morning and I wonder why so many people are joining your speech. So you must have something people love to hear. And um, the title of your speech was Woodland and Farmland, Natural Climate Solutions and Natural Options. Woodland and farmland are the forefront of institutional investors' growing interest in natural climate solutions. What are the reasons why? What is your opinion? Yeah, I think in the past several years, there's been just a very strong emergence of global consciousness around nature and biodiversity loss, and especially around climate change, and more commitment from investors and from companies to actually address those issues. So. Uh, for instance, you know, we've seen an explosion of net zero commitments from companies and investors, and they're all looking for investable asset classes that can provide both return and value when it comes to climate change mitigation and biodiversity loss and addressing those issues. And timber and farmland as natural capital solutions really offer some of the most promising solutions in those areas. We're seeing a greater focus on ESG and impact more broadly, and uh, looking at natural climate solutions like timberland and farmland really represents the opportunity to invest in proven asset classes at scale opportunities with long track records and you know, proven investment managers like Mangalife Investment Management. So uh, it's very interesting, but there are, I guess, some challenges. What are the challenges in these special asset classes? Uh, yeah, so I, I think the first challenge really is investor knowledge about what are generally more niche asset classes compared to other you know, more established larger asset classes like private equity, public markets, infrastructure. You know, there is a, a level of knowledge uh, required for timberland investment, for farmland investment. They are biological assets. They do behave in different ways and have a dis different risk return profile than other assets. And then You know, when you look at impact, layering on things like the carbon markets, for instance, provides a whole new suite of questions and intricacies that investors need to understand in order to get comfortable with the risk return dynamics. And, and on the carbon side in particular, uh, carbon markets are really evolving after being developed over two decades. There's a lot of change, a lot of fluidity in those markets. So understanding the fundamentals and where Uh, carbon markets are going, I think, is instrumental to, to understanding timberland and farmland as natural climate solutions. But uh, asset managers normally have no special knowledge about uh, um, this asset class, um, so that it must be very difficult to come into this market because there are some risks. We can see that on our own, you know, the so-called Borkenkäfer, you know, in Germany we had a big crisis because a lot of wood yep. have to die. We have stormy weather, high waters, um, fire. That's a typical risk for this asset class. How to avoid, how to ensure maybe against risk like that? Is there, is there a way? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, so first, back to the education question. You know, we've been sustainably managing timberland on behalf of our clients for nearly 40 years. We've got deep industry expertise. We have an economic research team Uh, that is really instrumental in providing industry research and thought pieces to help with client and investor education. And then to your question about risk management, um, typically we don't look at third-party insurance for our client properties, and that's historically been a function of premiums being far too expensive and, and not economical for our Timberland clients. What we do is a two-prong approach. So one is geographic diversification of client portfolios in the first instance, it's very unlikely that a natural disaster, be it from fire, pest, disease, is going to affect one geography at the exact same time as another disparate geography. So say California and Australia are probably not going to experience the same natural disasters at the same time. And then from there, we're conducting active management on the properties. You know, the majority of my colleagues are on the ground foresters, area managers, They're conducting controlled burns. They're conducting pre-commercial thinning to remove a lot of that fuel and actively managing the forest to ensure forest health. Mm. 
Yeah, Eric, it looks like that you are very experienced in this asset class. Maybe I may ask you to give us a glimpse of your experiences in this asset class as a company, Manulife Investment Management, so that we know a little bit more about this company. Sure. So uh, Manulife Investment Management actually acquired uh, our Timberland agriculture business, which was formerly known as Hancock Natural Resource Group, part of the broader John Hancock group of companies. Uh, purchased uh, Hancock in 2004. So for nearly 20 years, we've been a part of Mangalife Investment Management and actually went through a rebranding exercise about a year and a half ago. Nothing really changed except for the nameplate where we became more fully integrated into Mangalife Investment Management. But as I mentioned, we've been sustainably managing uh, timberland and farmland assets on behalf of our clients for nearly 40 years, all with that core focus on sustainability. Yeah, Eric, so we are finished now with this interview. Your speech was a great success. Many thanks for your experience. Many thanks for this interview. Bye for now. Thank you.